So we've been waiting all week to see the Ferrari Formula One car. We've seen lots of the other cars on the grid now. And when we had the surprise images of the Alfa Romeo yesterday, it had a few people thinking that maybe that was an indication of what Ferrari might be up to. And now the Scuderia Ferrari SF90 is out. And Jake Boxall, you've had a quick look at the images. And if we were expecting the Alfa Romeo, but in nice red matte paint, that's not what we've got at all here, is it? This looks like quite a basic car at this stage from Ferrari. Well, definitely. It's a lot more simple and less cluttered than the Alfa. I mean, I think every car on the grid compared to the Alfa is a little <laughs> bit less cluttered, to be honest with you. Um, but it's just an evolution of what Ferrari have been doing over the last couple of seasons. It's a package that seems to work for them. And so obviously they've been fighting Mercedes for the last couple of years. So why, why not continue that? One of the key words that's come out while we've been talking about the images that we've seen from the launch today is, is simple. Which particular areas of the car to you look simple? Well, I'd say all of it, really. <laughs> um, it's just refreshingly clean and uncluttered. Um, we expect this to be a little bit of a launch spec car, so maybe in Barcelona it will end up looking a bit different and they'll push the boat out a little bit more. But um, even this front wing, which is complex by design um it's still quite simple looking it's clean it's just very clean sort of swoop upwards um again this is sort of a trend we've got that's just the vortex being produced here and then the inward vortex being produced at this point here which is then just eventually essentially fired at this point here further down the car um but there is a little bit of a complexity in the point at the end plate uh, i appreciate get appreciate people are going to get annoyed by me pointing at a screen but I can only do that um, but as you can see the wing element sort of twists as it gets closer to the end plate and so by the time it's at the end plate the angle of attack is a lot lower so we saw this to an absolute extreme with the uh, Alfa Romeo yesterday in that they're not too bothered about producing straight up downforce at this point this is the point where they're trying to drive as much airflow around the front of the tyre as possible and what we can also see is there's just a tiny little ridge in the end plate there. And what they're trying to do is just spill as much air outwards as early as possible. And they're able to sort of double dip with that almost because they can do it with the end of the end plate and they can do it at this point here as well. So that's just trying to create as much outwash as possible. I know I've used that word a lot over the past week, but that's something that all the teams are trying to claim back. So that's generally Ferrari's ethos with, with the front wing. The nose section as well uh, looks, it's essentially a continuation of what they've used over the past couple of years. We can see an S duct here. Uh, the points at which feed the S duct are just essentially behind the nose pylons there. And so again, that's just trying to ensure flow attachment over the top of the car, redistribute any, any high pressure air that gets underneath the nose, try and bleed that off, pop it over the top of the car and that's just going to negate essential lift effects, really. Now, we're saying that this car is quite basic, but that's not in the way that we were talking about some of the smaller teams earlier in the week, where we were saying this is pretty much a 2018 car with some 19 bits bolted on there. There are still some key differences on this car, and where have you seen those on it? Uh, well, we can see the barge wall pattern here. Um, obviously, that is st t to 19 specifications but it's a difference over what they had last year. Uh, you can see little uh, turning veins at the bottom there that's just trying to drive as much flow outward as possible. Then obviously Ferrari have retained this structure here ahead of the side pod. Um, that's essentially very, very similar to what they've had over the last couple of years, but again, that's had to change with the new barge board regulations. They retain the inlet structure as well uh, that they've pioneered over the past couple of seasons and everybody's sort of gravitating towards now. Um, That's a polite way of saying copied. Yes, definitely. Um, but it yeah. has changed on the Ferrari, hasn't it, compared to last year? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it retains the same top inlet structure mm. that over the top of the side pod as well, but the way that uh, it's being managed is, is different using the two crash structures either side. That is a different structure. Um, and obviously the mirrors as well. Um, everybody is, is, is gone for that design, gone for trying to bring them as outboard as possible. And Ferrari have done the same, which is very strange considering that they used the halo mounted design last year. And you think maybe they'd try and do that again. And they have this sort of shrouded design as well, where they try to essentially drive throat, flow through the mirror 
and they've not done that. So maybe they'll change it, maybe they won't, I'm not entirely sure. But what's absolutely crucial in showing that this isn't just a 2018 car with 2019 bits on it, this particular point here, the engine cover, Ferrari have really tightened up their whole packaging essentially and we saw hallmarks of this in the Haas that was launched last week. Um, less so in the Alpha, the Alpha looks a lot different but the the Haas was hinting at this and this is what Ferrari have come up with. It's an incredibly tight design. The bodywork falls away very very quickly and they can make the most of the fin at the back. The side pods are very very tight as well but what's crucial is they're able to use that fin a little bit earlier. Um, and what you get is this intake and the engine cover. Sometimes um, you can create sort of like a mix of a flow afterwards and it just creates this massive turbulent zone. And then when it gets to the rear wing, they lose a little bit of performance. So that fin just essentially helps to manage that, brings it into a sort of straighter line, more laminar flow. And then when it gets to the rear wing, it's more easily picked up. And then when we get to the rear wing as well, uh, Ferrari, like a lot of teams, have used these strakes at the back. Uh, that's something they used last year and didn't entirely get on with. They put it on the car in Singapore, and then by the time they got to Sochi, it was one of the upgrades that they didn't like and sort of rolled back on. Mm. Um, so it's interesting to see them persist with it again. Uh, clearly, they see a benefit in having it, and they're gearing up for another go at trying to use it. But yeah, it looks a lot more clean compared to perhaps some of the 19 designs we've seen but it might increase in complexity or Ferrari have been able to create quite a simple car that's just going to work on track. We'll have to see. Now we've seen a few of the teams have had shakedowns now and whenever images of the cars are released from those there's always a few bits and pieces whether it's the Toro Rosso or the Mercedes or of course the Alfa Romeo. They are the most complex looking cars that we've seen. So would it be right to perhaps assume that when we see the real Ferrari on track in Barcelona next week, we are going to see quite a few more details? And where might you expect to see them? Um, I think we might see a little bit more details around the floor. Obviously, we've got some slots here along the longitudinal edges. I think you, everybody's always pushing for a little bit more performance from the floor. And that, and in conjunction with the bargeboard section, that's always something you want to push a little bit development towards. Uh, whether Ferrari will do that or whether they've just stumbled across a fundamentally strong car that they're not going to have to overcomplicate with too many aero parts we're not entirely sure at this stage but that's always a part they need to develop that teams always want to push to the limit and then front wing as well obviously Ferrari have sort of worked out a design that other teams have stumbled across but if they push it to the same extremes as Alpha you know that's always a possibility um, I know they're just speculating at this point but there's a lot of basis for upgrades, I think, um, especially with these new rules when everybody's just trying to figure out what the best configuration is. So, yeah, uh, that's what testing's for. They're just going to have to work it out. Um, it, they've got eight days in Barcelona to do that. And then when it gets to Melbourne's for the season proper, they'll have a good amount of data to take away and uh, we'll see what they bring for the new season. Yeah, we're not going to have to wait too long to find out what this car is going to look like in testing spec. Now this week we've been hearing from our technical illustrator Giorgio Piola for his thoughts on the cars. Now he was at Maranello today for the Ferrari launch so he's had a proper up close look at the car that was revealed and here's what he thinks of it. Ferrari looks to be uh, quite different from uh, the other cars especially starting from the from the front wing. Uh, the front wing has a little curly conjunction with, with the central section, the neutral central, central section and also the philosophy of the flap uh, and the shape of the flap is very similar to the one of the Sauber even if it's not so extreme. So they have a bigger cord in the, in the center of the flap and nearly neutral and smaller cord on the outside close uh, the, the end plate where Alfa Romeo is even more extreme, just, uh, it seems to just to try to direct the air all around the front tire. Uh, especially from the front uh, picture, you can see very well how the side pods are narrow. This is something that we knew, that was uh, trying to reduce, minimize all the uh, cooling, 
and making a, a much better efficient cooling. And you see also that there is not so much undercut in the low section. And then the side pods uh, uh, shape uh, and the section from, let's say, from the driver to behind, it looks a little bit similar to Red Bull. That means uh, wider uh, side pods in the low section and narrow on the top. Uh, while last year there was a big uh, undercut uh, in the in the low section. The engine cover is very reduced, so they put uh, the installation of uh, the intercooler and the rest uh, of the mechanics trying to make it lower as possible. Again, in the rear suspension, there is some uh, similarities with the Alfa Romeo. The bracket of the top wishbone is very big, and especially there is a big uh, area foil, a big aerodynamic device uh, boarding uh, the top wishbone. And again, it's something that we saw also on the Sauber.